Critical hit Punch All Nazis takes place in the early days of World War II and combines high adventure with cosmic horror. All dates, locations, and historical events are thrown out the window in order to create a fun story, so don't put too much thought into historical inaccuracies. All accents are done poorly, but with love, and no disrespect is intended. Last time on Critical Hit. We should be okay. By the way, what is that? We we may have just seen a Shigo come into the world. Yeah, it looks like the local wildlife has something to say about Nazis too. <laughs> You've cleared the road of the Mothman's remains and the truck and the dead farmer and the dead Nazi guy. And I'm guessing you're heading back into Dunwich? Or yeah, what are into, you doing? I think, I mean, we don't really, the, the main reason why we want to go back into Dunwich is so that we can call the somebody as soon as possible instead of making right. it, instead of driving all the way back to Arkham and then calling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a bell ringing out in the distance that you can hear. And everyone suddenly realizes, oh, it is now New Year's Day, January 1st, 1940. Mm. Oh. Well, Happy New Year, fellas. Yeah, I just uh, yeah. forgot about it. What a way to ring in the new year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... It's how we spent most of the year, I guess. Yeah. Well, we did have sort of a break for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. What What are you doing, Blisco? How are the roads? Uh, were the roads all snowy or anything? Yeah, I mean, you could roll if you wanted to a, a one uh, d twenty. And we can figure out if the road conditions have changed oh, in the last couple of hours. Hold up, <laughs> full of, just full of baby Mothman. <laughs> going, Papa, Papa. And they're all, they're all splatting. Papa. They're all splatting on your windshield. Papa. Or actually they're splatting on the windshield. And as they all look at Blisco in the final moments, they're like murderer. And then they end their lives. Why did you kill my father? 18. 18. It's frosty. It's an early morning frost. It's chilly, but uh, even as the as the moon pokes in and out of the clouds, it is very picturesque. Picturesque. So you have very little problem retracing your your path from these country wilds of uh, North Massachusetts, the Miskatonic Valley, back into the quiet hamlet of uh, Dunwich. The town is quiet, like no lights on in any of the buildings. Everything looks to be locked up. This is not a town that parties on New Year's Eve. Yeah, we keep running into <laughs> towns like this. Um, is there a phone booth? Yeah, like an external phone anywhere. Yeah, Matthew, uh, why don't you uh, roll an observation plus... Um, uh, insight, uh, D1. I'm good at this. Ha ha! Let's see. Doodly do. And the little alligator wants to eat the 15. The 13. The 13. Oh, you're right. It is 13. My bad. Two successes. Hey, two successes. Sure enough, there is... You see down there between the post office and the mercantile, there's a phone booth. There's a little light that's flickering on the inside. You've been to too many small towns. I was uh, raised in a small town. All right. So we find a phone booth. Yep. yep. The light's flickering. I'll we'll check for a dial tone. Get out. Yeah. Okay. You pick it up and you realize that this may be a payphone, but this is definitely like a party line payphone. So the minute you pick it up, 
you can hear some woman frantically saying, something turned bust through the barn and through the farmyard. It's going across the pasture. What are we going to do? And then you hear a voice on the other side saying, it's too early. You're probably drunk. Go to bed, woman. <laughs> what do we do about that? What do you want to do about it? Just wait for them to get off the phone. Uh, yeah, she, she, I mean, in uh, oh man, do I have to explain just, party lines to you guys? So you just like click, the, click, click the thing uh, a bunch of times. So a, a couple of things. So I grew up on a party line. I know people are just like, really seriously. Yes, uh, it was cheaper for my parents to get a party line, even though for the longest time they were the only ones on the party line. But occasionally we would have other people on the party line uh, with us. And so um, if you picked it up and the other person was talking, I mean, you could listen in to all the, the gossip that was going on. Or if you were polite, you just hung up the phone and you waited a little bit and then you picked it up again to see if they were done with their conversation and then made your phone call. Uh, if it's an emergency and there was a time when my sister was like deathly sick with uh, pneumonia and mom needed to call the doctor's office to find out what to do. And people were on the party line and were on there for like 15, 20 minutes, just yapping. And finally, my mom had to yell at them and say, could you guys get off? I have an emergency. I have a sick child. And uh, they did hang up a, a minute or two later for her to make that call. So, yeah, I mean, you guys can continue to listen in if you like, or you could interrupt them and say, hey, we've got an emergency here or whatever you want to do in this situation. But they're continuing to bicker back and forth. And the woman seems very distraught. And the man on the other line um, is just like wants to go back to sleep. And he's trying to dismiss her, her rantings about something that has broken through the barn and, and traveled across the um, pasture as just drunk ramblings. Do, do you mind? go will say to the doc, like if he wants to give him the phone. Sure. I'm going to give him my best official voice. Excuse me. I have an important call. It's Who's government this? business. Government business? Are you here to help us? It busted through my barn. Yes, I need to call for help, but I need you to get off the line. Good, hurry up. And she hangs up the phone. The man's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> and he hangs up the phone, too. She's gone? Yep, everybody's gone. All right, All right I think we're clear. I'm dial the number. What's the number? Oh, here, it's this one. calling? ER549. I believe we were going to call the best uh, insurance rates in town. What is this? What? <laughs> Bondike five, 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 five. I believe we were going to call our commanding officer first. Were we not? Well, we're calling the general first because we're in U S soil and they'll can probably mo mobilize something faster. And right. we call the Brits. Okay. So yeah, we're going to uh, see if we can call. General, General Eisenhower. No, uh, the our former oh, commander, uh, Doolittle. Uh, what is his name? Sergeant Doolittle. So yes, oh, the sergeant, sergeant. Okay. right? Yeah. Yep. Or Corporal Doolittle. I forget what is actually. I mean, I he's been he's hanging out with I. He's been hi hanging yeah. out with Eisenhower. You think they would have promoted him already? Yeah. Oh yeah. He may have been promoted. Uh, yeah. So you have to go through a number of exchanges and you know long distance and. Patch your way through to the U.S. military. Finally, after about 10 minutes, you and hear I mean, the operator say, go ahead, sir. Yeah. And then the phone picks up on the other end. Hello? Who's this? Sergeant. You better have a good reason to be calling me this early in the morning, son. Who is this? I hand the phone to Dutch. <laughs> hey, Sarge. Who is this? Uh, this is Dutch. Dutch, Carlos Arbogast? Yep. Why you have the nerve of you to be calling me right now after finding out you've been hanging out with Nazis? I thought you were supposed to be on our side, son. And here I open the paper and there's a picture with you with a Nazi. Yeah, but they're American Nazis. They're, it's like country rats. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a problem. We are. Yeah, you got a in... problem? The general saw you hanging out with Nazis. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. Um. 
But uh, right now, there's a Shoggoth on the loose in... Uh, what's this town called again? Dunnitch? Dunnitch. Dunnitch. The Shoggoth? Mm-hmm. This is horrible. What are you going to do about it? Well, call you. <laughs> See if you can scramble anybody out here. And then we're going to call the Brits and see what they want to do about it. Have you boys even been able to make it to Arkham or are you just hanging out with Nazis there in Albany, New York? Yeah, we're calling you from Dunwich. Dunwich is halfway between Albany and, and, and uh, uh, Arkham. Oh, no, we made it to Dun. Well, we made it to Arkham. Did you by chance make contact with uh, Armitage. He's the expert on Shogoths. We did, yeah. And what did he tell you to do? Uh, Professor Armitage is not always disposed to having a conversation that begins and ends uh, coherently. What about his daughter? If you talk to Sally, she should you know how to take care of a Shogoth. Well, we're going to talk to her, too. We just thought we'd let you know that uh, if you start hearing a lot of calls about barns suddenly exploding and invisible creatures moving about, um, this is this is why, I suppose. Nazis and Shagoths! Uh, Eisenhower's just gonna bust a blood vessel over this! You better get this taken care of! And he hangs up the phone. All right. Less than helpful. I'll, uh... And he did tell you to go talk to Armitage about it. But... Yep. I'll dial up the Brits. Number, please. Oh, where is the number? Uh, this kid, uh, Franklin, told me he wanted a turkey, but I'm not really oh, sure what that's. Hello, Carlos. Hey. Let me guess. You want to speak with the Brigadier? I'd like to, yeah. One moment. I'll see if he's uh, done with his lunch. All right, say hi to your sister for me. Yep, Happy New Year. You too. Uh, ma- ma- hello, uh, Carlos. It's the Brigadier. Hello, Brigadier. Yes, we are, what can I do for you? We are in uh, Dunwich, New York? Or Massachusetts. no, Massachusetts. 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 Um, and uh, we have recovered one of the items. Oh, that's excellent. Which one? Uh, the book. Oh, excellent, excellent. I'll let everyone know. Good job. Uh, however, yes? uh, we uh, experienced some uh, trans-dimensional issues, and now there is a what we believe to be a Shoggoth on the loose. Oh, dear Lord. So, and what are you going to do about it? Well, we're going to head back and talk to uh, Armitage and Daughter and see if they... Uh, have any ideas? The expert, yes. So I just thought I'd let you know and see if uh, you had any advice or resources. We called um, our former CEO and he had advice, but I don't think they're going to give us any resources. Well, you see, the last time that a Shoggoth appeared in the United States, people took it as a joke. They thought that the Hill people were the ones that were... um. Uh, crazy, making stories up. So Armitage and his companions were um, summarily dismissed when they came back with stories of a uh, giant creature that they have dispatched into the ether. You understand? Right. Of course. All right. Well, just uh, letting you know, then, uh, we better get back to Arkham. Yes, yes. Very good. Um, yes. Uh, anything else? Um... I don't think so. I'll I'll write up a a report. Ah, very good. Well, I'm I'm pleased that you uh got another item. Uh, how many is this now that you have in your possession, or I should say, in our possession? <laughs> uh, so we have um an orb, a book, uh, a necklace, and a mask. Right. So, we have four. Oh, excellent, excellent. And you're heading to uh, Kentucky next? Yes. Very good, very good. Well, keep up the good work. I must say that it, uh, it is uh, a great way to start off the new year with a, a bit of good news. So, 
Good job, boys. Oh, thank you. And, uh, yep, we'll call you when it's done. Excellent, excellent. Let us know if you need anything. Yep. Happy New Year. Yes, to you too. Hang up. Well, that was nice and polite, but that was a bust too. Hmm. Let's head back to Arkham. Should we uh, maybe call to Arkham? Yeah, maybe we should call them first, but I don't have that lady's home phone number. If only there was some kind of a (laughs) book or resource that that might contain phone numbers or... Is there there a phone book on the chain? There is a phone book on the chain. I'm going to look on the chain. Well, first of all, I have to find the subsection for Arkham. Yeah, there is a, this is the greater Miskatonic Valley uh, directory. So Arkham is listed. In fact, they, they do take up most of the, most of the phone book. Yeah. It's after Anaheim, but before Azusa. Yeah. Then we, we look for, uh, Armitage. Yep. There's an Armitage listed. Can you imagine being like a plumber in the greater Miskatonic Valley? (laughs) Oh man. The things that (laughs) would would just be the worst. Getting unstuck from people's uh, pipes. Oh, sounds terrible. Like, oh, uh, this is, one has it, a human face. Is it the professor? Uh, it just says Armitage Doctor. Armitage Doctor. Is Sally a doctor? I mean, she might be. I don't know. I can't remember. Sally was studying to be a doctor. Not a medical doctor. Mm. Yeah, like a, like a PhD. Yeah. Okay. But there isn't like and a list listeners, of please do not write in talking about the differences between a PhD and a real doctor. Believe me, I've dealt with PhDs and real doctors in the same room together, having the argument about you're not a real doctor kind of conversation. I don't need it in an email exchange. Yeah, there's nothing. There are no other Armitages like an, an S Armitage or something that might be hiding no. Sally living alone. No, but this this phone book also looks pretty old. Like okay, if well, you look at the cover, if you look at the cover, there's a a picture of a little girl with a, a pull toy behind her, you know, one of those paintings. Oh man, God, I'm Matthew knows the rest of you probably do not. Maybe Brian does. <laughs> At one point when they used to send out the phone books, they would have people paint pictures and have a competition. Sure, that sure, would be the yeah. cover of the, of the phone book for the next year. This one, if you look at it, doc, you can tell that this is the 1932, uh, phone book. <laughs> oh, I remember this one. That girl's now married with four kids. Um, okay. Well, I think we should dial the number for the doctor. Uh, okay. Arkham five. And it just, it just six, rings. Six, yeah. That's six. actually the number. That's it. It's just Arkham five. That's how, <laughs> that's how long the doctor has had the, uh, the phone number and, and the phone just rings yep. and it rings and it rings and it rings. He moves pretty slow. Uh, do we remember this goes on for a he... good, this goes on for a good five minutes. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to pick up. I mean, it is mm-hmm. late. It's like, by the time you guys got back to Dunwich, it's probably one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. Try to see if you can reach them at the college. They might be there. Okay. Partying or being nerds. We can definitely, um, I wonder. Yeah, we call the library. And again, it just rings, rings. and rings and rings and rings. I don't think they're up, boys. All right. Well, let's head back then, um, because we sure as heck are not equipped to deal with the Shoggoth uh, on our own. Mm. Psychologically, mentally, or physically. All right, Blisco, here's your moment to shine. Da, 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 da. Are, are you guys going to hop in the car and drive all night back to Arkham? Yep. All right. Let's uh, Let's see if you make it. Going to give you a, what does drive all night? It lets you lower a, a, uh, a, when I'm operating a vehicle, I may use vehicles instead of resilience for any skill tests to resist fatigue. Okay. Exhaust well, let's see sleep. if you make it, uh, let's do a will plus resilience, uh, check. Uh, this is going to be a D three because you guys have gone through a lot and you say for the hour or two that you were knocked out, you have had zero sleep. You're probably all wired after just fighting a, uh, a uh, flying creature and another flying creature. And we need to see if that adrenaline high continues for you as you make a mad dash back 
to the city of Arkham. Ba, 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 ba. You have one momentum left over from your last uh, session. Yeah. I'm debating how to use it. Do you have anything that lowers your difficulty? Born to drive. Test? Okay. When attempting a vehicle's tests, skill test to operate a vehicle with a difficulty of three or higher, may spend up to three momentum to reduce the difficulty to be one, two, or three. One per. Uh, the complication range of the test increases by the same amount as the difficulty was reduced, however, due to the risk of the maneuver. Okay. This is just a, are you going to fall asleep? Uh, you don't have enough momentum, but you could give me threat. Well, he can spend up to three, so he could lower the difficulty by one. Mm-hmm. Make it a yeah. D2. Yep. Which would, I mean, would probably be a similar statistics as just buying a a, a die. Yeah, I think momentum. I just buy the die with the one momentum. Yeah. Okay. And hope that I roll low. Yeah, and you can use your vehicles instead of, uh, yeah. what is it, right. resilience? Gross. Did you do it? Oh, no, only one success. Um, okay. So on your way back, you're trying to go fast, but the rocking of the car, the hum of the engine, the heater is really blasting out heat. Uh, the purring sound that you hear coming from the trunk. Uh, <laughs> a lullaby channel, which is the yes, only radio. Station. Yes. Welcome to Arkham Radio, your lullaby station. Here we go with Sweet Sounds of Silence for the next 30 minutes. Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back right after this cigarette break. Um, let's see. I need um, Rodrigo to roll me a will plus a resilience check, D2. Matthew will plus resilience, D2. And Valentino a will plus resilience, D2. Zero successes for Matthew. Crud. Doc nods off pretty quickly. Uh, Only one success from Brian sitting in the back seat. You also nod off and you're sleeping. And Dutch also sitting in the front seat. Just the the pure adrenaline of the last couple of hours just finally gets to all three of you. And about an hour into this car ride, you don't have any coffee. You don't have anything to, you know, no uh, metamphetamines in your in your medical kit and one by one we just didn't take them no you didn't (laughs) take them yeah one by one you all start to nod off and blisco you're just sitting there driving and driving and driving and driving and oh my god look out there's a tree and you guys wind up in the ditch (laughs) and you are all uh everybody roll me well i guess i'm the one that gets to roll for damage Hmm. I'm, I'm horrified at that noise, whatever that uh, You all take one physical damage. You all bump your heads or scrapes or cuts or whatever in the, uh, in the ensuing accident. Uh, my uvula! <laughs> your car is in a ditch full of snow, and Blisco suddenly wakes up with the rest of you. You nodded off on your way back to Arkham. Is the car full of snow or the ditch full of snow? The ditch is full of snow, but now there's plenty of it also all up against the side of the car. And if you uh, broke any windows, um, roll me a roll me a D2 there, Rob. Let's see if you broke any windows. Just flip a coin. Yeah. Two. You do not break any windows, fortunately. But it's going to take you at least an hour to dig yourself out of the ditch and get back up onto the road. So this slows your progress getting back to Arkham. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, mostly all right. Yeah. My uvula is a little sore, but yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. You're not going to need it for digging. <laughs> uh, you can hear a I... meowing sound I... from the trunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll try to, Put the car back on the road. Yeah, it takes, like I said, it takes an hour's worth of your of your travel time. Any speeding you may have been doing, Blisco, is suddenly uh, slowed down um, because you have to get the car back up on the road. And you can hear the cat whining and fussing the entire time as you guys push and shove and get that back up onto the road. Uh, everybody has taken, you know, one physical damage. Um, 
certainly being out in the brisk night air, the temperature is very cold. Uh, that does invigorate you quite a bit and you are able to stay awake uh, for the rest of the drive back to, to Arkham. Do we have any actual amphetamines in my bag? Um, you know, I, I read this story and this is really, this is really crazy story. Uh, no, you don't have any, uh, amphetamines in your, in your backpack, <laughs> but the course. long story is, so the long story is there was, and I forget it, like a Norwegian soldier or something in world war two was behind enemy lines. And he took, uh, he took these pills that were in his emergency kit. That was the only thing he had was these pills and of course, water from the surroundings. He ran four days nonstop, lost like 40 pounds in order to get back to safety. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that he was on meth. The, the pills that they had in their yeah. medical kit was meth to keep the soldiers awake and alive and going. And this guy took a ton of meth and just ran for four days straight until he got back to safety. Uh, was but this? No, you, this was like in world war two. I want to say it was yeah. a Nor Norwegian soldier that, that this happened to. Yeah. Like, um, I know that a lot of like Nazi command was on meth, was on yeah. meth methamphetamine just because yeah. Well, it's like the doctors were... are like, this, this is healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Builds up your momentum. You see. So unfortunately, no, you don't have any meth in your, in your kit. I'm looking at the cough syrup though. It looks like it's equal parts, alcohol, got... cannabis, chloroform, and morphine. Well, it's definitely got codeine in it. So if you <laughs> want to put people to sleep, uh, you got that going for yeah. you. Which is nice, you know, I and wouldn't what's... drink it to try and stay warm in the cold weather. Who wants to see a spinoff in which Doc and Blisco make meth? <laughs> <laughs> what? Ooh, it would what be called. It would be called Breaking Sad. Breaking So So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, nobody's. Uh, the cat continues to meow as you guys continue to drive, and you finally, finally make it back to Arkham uh, New Year's Day, and it is um, the sun's up. It's seven o'clock a.m. Uh, there are people out and about. The um, the diner is open, as are a couple of other restaurants. Oh, hey, the diner's open. Uh, mm -hmm. So you maybe grab some coffee for the road. and Yeah, let's get some coffee and see if they have any that, like prepared sandwiches or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you go in and uh, uh, Velma is there and she greets you and tells you to have a seat. And you can either sit in a booth or at the, at the, uh, at the counter. You guys can uh, order some coffee and some breakfast if you like. Mm -hmm. What are, What are you looking for? Do we have like a a thermos or anything that we could take some coffee with us? Um, she looks at you and she goes, "You look familiar. Do I know you?" Oh, I just got that kind of face. I think. I guess you do. Eh. And she pulls out a kind of a. It's a little dirty looking on the outside. And she's like, a truck driver came through a few days ago and left this here. I don't figure he'll be back. So I'll just fill this up with coffee and you guys can, you boys can take it with you. Great. Thanks. I'll, 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 uh, rinse it first. <laughs> yeah. You see her kind of look at you a little bit and you see her unscrew the cap and she pours out something that might have been coffee at one time. <laughs> and she just kind of dunks it in the soapy dishwater and you know, flicks it out, you know, shakes it out and then fills it up with, with coffee and screws the lid back on for you. Good enough. Anything else for you boys? Uh, no, I think we'll just do with the coffee for now. Unless you have like, do you have like a pastry or something? Oh, sure. She pulls out some deep fried donuts. Yeah, let's do that. These are the doughiest, friest donuts you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fried dough. And while you guys are sitting there eating your donuts and drinking your coffee out of the cups uh, and the, while you're keeping your thermos for later, you can hear some people chatting in the room, talking to you. Know, well, you know, Happy New Year. Oh, so good to see you. I hope you had a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got the weirdest phone call from my cousin in Dunwich last night. Blah, 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 blah. And people just continue to talk and go about their business. All right. Nobody seems to be like super distressed and talking about monsters eating people from the great beyond or anything. I mean, why would they? Well, that's a good question. I didn't know if something happened that we didn't know about. I mean, what are you trying to find out? Whether there's a Shagoth eating people. 
Well, all you heard is somebody mentioned that they got the strangest phone call from their cousin in Dunwich. It, they didn't seem very distraught. They didn't seem very could, distraught about that. Could be that they were waiting for the Mothman for a card game and he never showed up. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Rod Mothman went and got drunk. All right, let's get out of here. Let's try and see if we can find the uh, Armitages. Yeah. Okay. You're going to go down to the university? Yeah. Okay. We'll try that uh, first. You make your way down to the university, and sure enough, it's a, it's a, it's a Monday, and business as usual. Um, I don't know when people decided to make uh, New Year's Day a official big holiday, Day but... holiday. Yeah, this appears to be business as usual, and so... There are people walking around the university. The buildings seem to be open. And there's the Orn Library. Nice. Guard dog. Yep, there's Napoleon. He's just sitting there on the steps. He looks at you as you come in. He looks at you, Blisco, and he just gives you these really sad puppy dog eyes. Like, <laughs> hello, friend. You got something for Napoleon? Yeah, whatever I happen to have on me. Oh, you pull out a big... You got, like... You reach into your pocket, and there's like three donuts that come out onto your fingers. <laughs> and Napoleon's like, <laughs> oh, and his tail is wagging. Oh, he seems so happy. He butts his head up in, into your into your stomach. Does Rob have to roll for lost fingers? Or <laughs> I mean, he does now. Boo! You're fine. Yay. He licks your he licks all the remaining sugar off of the donut off of your fingers. <laughs> you get plus one to animal husbandry. <laughs> Yay. Let's uh let's go into the library. Okay. So you go in. Um is there a specific office you're looking for or are you going yeah, to Armit the main Armitage uh Yeah, we'll go straight office, to Dr. Armitage's office. Dr. Armitage's office. Yeah, you get up there and you see a sign on the door that says um, out for the day. Mm. And it seems to be a, like a hastily written on cardboard sign. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the name of his daughter? Sally. 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 Okay. Yeah, she's on the floor below and you go to her office yeah. and uh, it says Sally Armitage on, on the door. Uh, knock and on it. Uh, a moment later, the door opens and there's Sally Armitage. She looks tired. Oh, it's you. It's us. Well, what happened? Were you able to get the books? We yeah. did get your books. Do you, are, do you guys have them with you? I have them, or at least I had them when we got in the car. Okay. I mean, did you bring them up into to give them to her, or are you going to keep the books? I guess we might uh, as well have, but we're keeping the one that we're... Yeah, yeah. yeah. you definitely uh, keep would, the, the Luminaries book. Yeah. yeah, I was going to give her back the, the books and, and just if she asks about the Luminaries book, go, oh. Okay, she happily... Oh, thank goodness. And she takes the stack. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. And she's just looking at the titles of the texts uh, that you've presented her. And she's like, oh, this is an invaluable book. Oh, my gosh. This one... Had this gotten into the wrong hands, this could have just been disastrous. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, and what of the, the girl Carter, Evelyn Carter, what, what happened to her? Were you able to, uh, bring her in as well? She was hoist by her own proverbial petard. What, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, she's a splatter in the snow on the hill. Oh my God. What happened? Uh, uh it's a Shagoth. What? She was successful in opening a portal. Yes. And we believe that something came through. Well, we, we know something came through because it, as my uncle would say, squatter like a pumpkin. But did you see it? Nothing no. to see. Oh, my God. We believe it to be a Shagoth. A Shagoth, uh, of course. Of course it would be a Shagoth. Uh, so you didn't, uh, uh, try to engage with it. No, of course you didn't. You'd be dead. Uh, she goes and turns around uh, and goes over to her desk. This is not, this is like a small office. This is not like her father's office that has an outer room with a secretary and then an inner room just piled with books. This is like a, 
uh, average like faculty person's office. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see as, as she opens the door, there's her desk, a wooden desk. And of course she's got piles of papers and everything everywhere uh, on her desk is a phone and a roll of desks and a little lamp and a typewriter uh, that's there. But she goes over and she sets the books down on the desk and uh, she, she picks up the phone and she starts dialing a number and she waits for a moment. She says, come on, come on, come on, answer the call. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, it's Sally. Uh, we've got a problem. Yes, it's the one that we thought was going to happen. Yes, 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 it was them. Yes, I understand. Yes, meet you out front in 10 minutes. Get the others. Very good. And she hangs up the phone. Okay, um, well... Thank you for bringing the books back. Um, I wish um, I had better news about my father. He um, had a spell last night and is in the hospital now. Oh, sorry to hear uh, that. I was up all night uh, dealing with that, and now I have to deal with uh, the Shoggoth. So uh, thank you for bringing the books back. I hopefully, hopefully you found what you needed. May I see the book that you were going to look for? Yeah, we'll show yeah. it to her. Okay, she Wait. takes it and she looks at it. She goes, huh, I don't think I've ever seen this symbol before. She opens it up and she flips through it and she's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hmm. Well, this is actually a book that we should probably keep in the collection. This has got some very dangerous spell work in here. But uh, a deal is a deal and I did talk to the brigadier. And, um, Good luck, gentlemen. Um, Do you want help with the Shaga? Oh, no, I've, I've got help. And she goes over to the closet and uh, she pulls out like coveralls. You guys know coveralls like a mechanic would wear? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, so she puts, starts putting on a coverall. She goes, ever since I was a young girl, I've listened to the stories that my father would tell about how he and the others took on a Shoggoth and exactly what they did to dispel the Shoggoth. And, and then she pulls out like what looks like a giant fire extinguisher, you know, an oldie timey fire, fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. And she straps that onto her back. Um, yeah, my friends and I, we know exactly what to do to take care of the Shoggoth. Uh, I don't think we're going to need your help. And she starts to walk out the door. If you guys, want to follow her you can it seems like she's in a in a hurry but she doesn't sure. mind walking and talking with you yep do that if you if you have any questions for her as she's walking and talking she seems to be like total business now you can kind of tell she's trying to make some check marks check off a list in her mind of things that she needs at one point she stops goes back to her office and grabs uh what looks like a gun out of her desk it's hard to see because she pulls it out and tucks it into her coveralls very quickly and starts heading back down the hallway and down out to the door. Yeah. Any, uh, anything else anyone want to say to her before we go? Allie. Mm, yes. Thank you. Well, don't thank me. Um, if we can't stop the Shoggoth, then, um, it's over. You will. I have faith in you. You didn't have to help us and you did. And I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. well um and she gets out the door and at that moment a big 1938 ambulance pulls up in front of the orn library and parks right behind your car i don't know if you've seen a 1938 uh ambulance but just look one up it's pretty cool you're, looking you can see them from space i mean <laughs> oh yeah no it's it's pretty cool behind the wheel is a really large black woman like this woman has to be at least six feet tall and she gets out of the car and as she gets out of the car like the springs of this car kind of you know are kind of like oh thank god kind of thing yeah she is a mountain of muscle and she is also uh dressed in a pair of coveralls Good morning, Sally. Oh, good. Good morning, Bernice. Uh, thank you for getting everybody together so quickly. It's no problem. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Just a big muscular woman. 
as she looks to be, um, and she just turns to you and goes, uh, boys, this is, uh, Bernice. She's mechanical engineering. Ah, uh, good morning, boys. Um, and she looks at Sally, are these the ones? And Sally's like, yeah, she's the one. These are the ones. Okay. Uh, one of the, the back windows, uh, rolls down. And a, a young girl, this girl looks like she's probably in her early 20s. She's kind of small, meek, uh, mousy hair, black hair. She's wearing glasses. She looks very sleepy. And she's just like, oh, Mondays. I never get the hang of Mondays. Why does this have to happen on a Monday? I can't just wait till another day. And Sally's like, Chloe, we talked about this. Anytime these things happen, it doesn't it's not locked to a day of the week. It could happen any day. I know, I know, but maybe can we at least go get some pasta or lasagna or something when we're done? And and Bernice is like, yeah, we can go get some Italian food when we're done. I like that stuff. And uh, Sally goes around and opens up the back of the ambulance and she's taken off this uh, big fire hydrant, th- uh, not fire hydrant, fire extinguisher-like device that she's taking off. And she looks at you and she goes... Don't know if you have heard the stories. My father had this spray that he um, would use to spray on the the Shoggoth so that it would be visible. The creature's invisible 90% of the time. And by luring it to Sentinel Hill and spraying it with this, we think that we can uh, send it back. Chloe is a a chemical engineer student, but she also has some abilities with the... She looks around with some mystic arts. And Chloe just kind of looks at you and adjusts her glasses. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She rolls up the window and it looks like she's just laying back and going back to sleep. (laughs) And then uh, Sally looks around and says, where's Maddie? And at that moment, you hear like uh, a six-gun shooter, the, the, um, you know, the chamber just spinning. Click. And you turn around and there is another woman, uh, tall, red hair. She's also dressed like everybody else, coveralls and everything. She looks like she's ready for this. She looks like she could do anything at any minute. And, you know, she would be the one that would jump off the cliff first uh, if somebody dared her to. Uh, She's got this wild look in her eye and she's like, ah, yes, I've been waiting for this day for years. Cannot wait. To get me some Shagath action today. She walks up and she and Bernice uh, give each other a big, big hug. And she's like, well, what are we waiting for? Sally, get in the car. We need to go. And Sally's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, boys, this is, uh, this is Maddie. She's an uh, archaeologist. Yes. She works in our archaeology department. Ah, nice to meet you, boys. Nice to meet you. Oh, this is so exciting. We've taken on so many monsters and creatures. I cannot wait to finally get my hands on a Shagop. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And she is, uh, she gets in the back seat next to Chloe, and you can just see Chloe kind of roll her eyes a little bit, like, oh, God, I got to sit next to her. And uh, Sally comes up to you guys and is shaking your hands. She goes, I, I think we got this under control, boys. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, well, I guess... Uh, you released the Shoggoth, so I don't know how much I should be thanking you. Uh, you go ahead, you, uh, If uh, Yeah, uh, I guess if you're uh, certain you guys got this under control, uh, good best of luck to you. Uh, we'll probably have someone check back with you in a couple days, maybe gather any new intel you may have gleamed from this encounter. And... Uh, yes, just have the Brigadier or, I guess, General Eisenhower call me. It's It's <laughs> fine. Uh, at that point, I mean, it's when she just casually mentions General Eisenhower's name, it's pretty clear that uh, she's had more than one phone call over the last 24 hours with people. I mean, obviously. Um, yeah, good luck. And um, yeah, where are you headed to next or what's what is going on next? And Bernice is just kind of chuckling and shaking her head like, oh, boy. And she gets back into the into the car. And again, it kind of just she is a just muscular woman. The car just kind of sinks down again as she gets in. Where was uh, Clyde from? Uh, Kentucky. 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 Specifically the city of Barlow, Kentucky. You still plan on heading to Barlow? That's the plan. Well, uh, Barlow, Kentucky, that's um, it's a few days ride from here. 
Um, if you're going by car and she kind of looks at your car and what happened? This was a beautiful car the other day when you were here. Oh, you know, monsters, they'll mess up your car. And she kind of looks at you, Blisco, like monsters. We, we had a couple of mishaps. Uh-huh. Well, you know, the train might be faster, but if you want to take your car, that's totally understandable. And the roaring of the engine of the ambulance is going, but it's, she cocks her head and she's like, you guys hear that? Mm, it sounds, uh, sounds like a cat. Do you guys hear that cat sound? No. Uh-uh. Okay. Well, um, good luck, boys. And she gets in the passenger side in the front of the ambulance and, uh, the car revs its engine and Bernice puts it into gear and she just peels out on this uh, winter morning and starts heading back in the direction that you guys just came from. Bye. You see Chloe gives you the finger as, as you guys turn the corner. <laughs> Smiling. I like her. But Chloe's got spunk. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how well a group of misfits like that are going to do against a monster, but whatever. Well, <laughs> get us with something to aspire to, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You better straighten up, Blisco. Otherwise, we're going to trade you. <laughs> mm. The amount of stuff that happens around here, they got to call somebody. I mean, who, who are you going to call? I mean, you... I don't know who keeps up with uh, stuff going on in Arkham. Probably none of you, but <laughs> um, there's a bunch of high strangeness that goes on in Arkham. Uh, people, you can see it on their faces. You know, they don't like to look at other people. They don't like to make a lot of eye contact. People are friendly when they need to be friendly, but it's pretty clear that they, some people in this town have seen some stuff and other people just want to ignore all of the stuff. But when the strange stuff happens, whether it's some weird dog coming out of the corner of a, of a barn or whether it is, um, uh, you know, some kind of a creature flying out from, from the skies and terrorizing people, there definitely is, is somebody that people probably call in this town to deal with uh, ghosts and poltergeists and creepy crawly things. Yeah. And you may have just met that group. So, uh, I guess the question for you guys next is, do you want to drive to Barlow, Kentucky? It's about a three day drive four day drive, I guess, uh, cause it is winter time. Mm -hmm. Um, or are you going to take a train and hope that you can get all of your stuff on board from there? Therein lies the hook. I feel like the amount like of weaponry much? that we normally carry doesn't seem train friendly. Now, how much faster is a train? You would be there in, in about a day. But then again, that'll just get you to Barlow, but you, then you would still have to travel into the hill country yeah, I, area yeah. to get to the, get to that. And so that you're going to have to either find a car or a truck or something or somebody to take you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I think we might as well just take the car. All right. Um, See if we can get it all the way down to scraping on the asphalt. <laughs> there you go. You uh, think you're still good to drive there, Plisco? I don't know if any of the rest of us are any better shape, but... Uh, we should probably get a little more rest before we head out, but otherwise, yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably a good idea, Blisco, to go and, uh, you know, make sure the car is topped off with gas. You might just yourself, as a mechanic, want to look over the car and make sure that the car didn't suffer any major damage or anything, um, you know, from, from the accident that you guys had. Yeah. Maybe doc, um, a cat, make sure it's still in an, mostly one piece. Make sure that it's still dead. Yeah. Yep. Still dead. I feel like I may yeah. on a three day trip. I feel like we may just need to let little old lucky kind of go on his, his way as much as I hate to say it. You're not going to keep the cat? Oh, no. I mean, on the one hand, zombie cat, uh, fun at parties. On the other hand, we are 
you know, actually technically military personnel who are kind of trying to stay under the radar. And I mean, I'm torn. Should we take a Let's take a cat vote. All in favor of taking a dead cat, say aye. Mm-hmm. See, I feel like, I feel like we're, we're probably okay without a dead cat, I feel. Oh, the cat's been just mourning your return. I know. Since you, since you threw it out the third story window after your experiment failed. You know. It tracked you down and freed you. Do you from think. From the clutches of an evil, uh, evil woman. Do you think. And, and then you you're could, just like tossing it aside. Do you think that you could further repair this cat? You mean like with tape or. <laughs> sure. I, whatever. Do I? I I'll think that dishes. I don't know. Sure, Matthew. If you want to find out if you can do this, uh, probably roll an insight plus medicine check. So I'm just roll insight plus medicine to see if I can return this dead cat to enough life to where I can let it go into the wild. This seems like a winner. All right, I'm gonna do that. Please hold. Two successes. Hey, very good. Two successes. You get one momentum back out of this. Yeah, you are confident that uh, uh, you do not have the capabilities to do anything more than what you have already done to this cat, which is take a dead cat, bring it back to life. The cat went crazy. You threw it out a window. Uh, The cat has been surviving, what, this last eight years or whatever on its own and continually to slowly decay uh, over time you're pretty confident that you cannot do anything else beyond that. This is going to sound terrible. Do I feel that there is any method available to us that might humanely? Uh, oh no, you, you've tried. There's okay. no way that you can kill it. Well, I mean, and you know, from West, from reading West journal, I yeah. guess I should probably have you do a knowledge check, but uh, you know, from reading West journal that once you bring something back to life, it's back to life and saving, chopping it up into little tiny pieces. Um, it ain't going to be re dead again. It's not going to be re dead by dawn. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's yeah. I mean, he's not going to get any more dead. Well, well, wow. He's not going to get any less dead. Um, but no, I, I, there, there's no way for me to return him. And it's and as thankful as I am, I feel like, you know, all right, you're going to well, just, so are you going to just drive out into the country and leave it somewhere in the country? Or are you just going to let it go back into roaming the campus of, of Arkham, uh, Miskatonic university and have the groundskeeper continually try to chase it down? <laughs> Which now makes complete sense why the groundskeeper was chasing after something that so, you didn't know what was. So mad at that cat. Um, Maybe the girls can find something to do with it. That's what I wondered. I think we've unleashed enough creatures for them to deal with. <laughs> but I mean, they are into the uncanny. All right. Well, here's, here's the thing. A cat is a responsibility, right? However it is, you acquire that cat. So if we can't keep it, then at least we should do something so that it has the best possible life. Unlife. Unlife. The best possible unlife ever. Best so, possible. yeah, maybe life. let's, as we're leaving, let's go to the take it into the country and let it go there. There should be plenty of rats and voles for it to chew on. And it'll probably keep it away from people, you know, up until a farmer finds them and shoots them, which would probably then be a blessing. Or it's going to make the cat mad and kill the farmer. Who knows? Let's find out. Uncritical. Um, (laughs) <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, uh, are you guys going to rest up? 
first? Are you going to take a little bit of time to rest up, or or you feel like you need to be on the road immediately? Uh, I no. Rest. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. we'll get some rest. All right. And uh, Blisco, will you please roll me a vehicles plus reason check? D one. Uh, is this his check to do the? Yeah, this is the check to make sure the car is long distance drivable. Yeah, one success. That's enough. Oh, two successes. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you got vehicles yeah. as your. Uh, I'm I'm kind of really really good at cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feel confident that this car will make it long distance. The front fender is dented. Uh, the right front fender over the tire is is dented and kind of wobbly. But you, if you could get your hands on a hanger or something, you feel pretty confident that you could secure that back into place, and and there would be little to no rattling uh, during your trip to to Kentucky. Okay, everybody gets some rest. Uh, Blisco, this is also a chance for you to roll a. Um, insight plus vehicles again to, or actually this would be, yeah, insight plus vehicles again to check and see if you understand the map and the directions to get you to Barlow, Kentucky as quickly and easily as possible. This is, this is before the interstate system. So everything is yeah. just a weird conglomerations of some paved roads, some dirt roads, some just like paths. They just say go down this way. Maps are fairly accurate, but you're going to need to spend some time um, analyzing a map to see if you uh, have any questions or feel confident of getting to Barlow, Kentucky. One. Yeah, that's good. Good. Um, yeah, you feel like, confident. Like what was the? I haven't. Oh, D one. Oh, okay. Button. Sorry. Yeah. I thought you rolled. I thought you rolled the D one. Hey, good success. Two, yeah. Uh, two yeah, successes. yeah. You you look at uh, yeah two successes. Very good. You get a, a second momentum back. You got three momentum now. Uh, yeah, you guys feel pretty confident that you know how to get to uh, Barlow, Kentucky. Uh, uh, Valentino, if you would, would you roll me an observation plus insight check, please? A D one. Uh, two hey, very good. Two successes. You guys now have four momentum. Brian, if you would, because I want this to be a fun discovery for you. Mm -hmm. If you would, just do a Google Maps search for Barlow, Kentucky. B-A-R-L-O-W, Kentucky. Not to be confused with Barlow, Kentucky, which is the setting for a different podcast. Barlow, Kentucky, family. All right. Yep. Anyway. So get on your Google Maps. Do a search for Barlow, Kentucky. And when you find it, start to zoom out until you are looking at a, um, if you're on the Google Maps, you are probably zoomed out to, what is this view? Uh, you'll see it as soon as, soon as, as soon as it appears, uh, you will notice where the river joins another river. All right. The Cairo. <laughs> yes. Oh, what do you notice? What do you notice as you are looking at this map, Valentino? You notice that there is a city located right at the uh, crotch, or I don't know what it's called when two rivers join together, <laughs> but in a tree, it's called a crotch. Um, you notice right there where these two rivers are joining is a city called, it looks like it's spelled Cairo. It's pronounced Cairo. And the weird thing is, you guys were just recently in a city called Cairo, which is also located where two rivers meet. Yes. As you look at this map, please will me a, a roll me a will plus a resilience check D one. We're going to see if we can blow your mind here. Uh, oh, hey, success. all right, one, one success and one failure. Okay, you're going to have to take one. You're going to have to take one mental stress. It's going to take you a couple of days uh, for both your physical and your mental injury to go away. But something about looking at this map that Blisco has laid out before you trips something in your mind. You have this massive headache that just runs right through your head. And it sounds like you hear a big voice in your head saying, if things were reversed, you would understand what you see. And it's weird that that, that voice sounds super familiar. Did it sound familiar to you? Was it the great NATO? Oh, it sounded just like the great NATO. And as you look at the map and you're thinking reverse, 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 holy crap, 
if this map were flipped over the other way, Barlow lies around the same place that you guys were in Egypt when you had to travel west from Cairo to go and find the uh, the mask. This is almost like an inverse of what's going on in Egypt. Critical Hit Punch All Nazis is a production of Major Spoilers Entertainment and was produced and edited by me, Stephen Schleicher. If you'd like to get a behind-the-scenes making of this episode, be sure to check out the GM Roundtable Octum Cthulhu Edition at our Patreon page, patreon.com slash majorspoilers. Each week I discuss my plans for the upcoming game session, and Dr. Brad Will is there to share his reactions and advice on how to be a better game master. I will warn you, though, there are spoilers galore in every installment of the GM Roundtable Octoon Cthulhu Edition. So, if you don't like spoilers and don't want to know what I am planning next, don't listen to these episodes. Though, I will say, if you do listen, you'll be able to see how and where the players throw a wrench into my plans, and you're also going to have greater insight into the world that's being built into this campaign. Finally, we want you to record yourself doing your best on Critical Hit and send it to us at podcast at Majorspoilers.com and your voice will join the growing chorus of fans in upcoming episodes as well. Thank you again for listening this week, and here's hoping all of your dice rolls are Critical Hits. This podcast is copyright 2024 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.